On example five, if a billiard ball is dropped from a height of 100 meters, its height s at time t is given by the position function s of t is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 100, where s is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds. Find the average velocity over the time interval from 1 to 2. Okay, pretty common question type. It might be uh, in the multiple choice section on your AP Calculus exam, something like this, or maybe even tucked into one of the parts of a free response question. Okay, so let's break down some of these things. So this equation, this function that we see here, you've probably seen something like this, either in algebra class or uh, in physics class if you've taken one. And uh, let's, let's break down some different parts. What do you think this 100 is? Well, this 100 matches up with this 100 here, which is indicating its height off the ground when it first starts, right? So this is our initial height that's right there. Okay, and then this negative 4.9, do you know what this is? This is half of the acceleration due to gravity. It's negative because we're talking about going downwards and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Right? And this is half of that thing. And we're going to see where that stuff comes from after we learn, well, quite a bit more calculus, right? Okay, so this is a parabola. And this parabola is measuring the height of this billiard ball, this pool ball, off of the ground at time t. However, this is not to be confused with the path of the ball, because you can see from this so picture the path of the ball is just going straight down. It's just a line. However, its height is modeled by, uh, its height at any given time is modeled by a parabola. Okay, so for this one, it's very simple. All we have to do is find the slope between these two t values, right? And so I'm going to pull up this time GeoGebra, also a free app. You can easily use your calculator. I am going to type in that equation that we had before, but I'm probably just going to use x's instead of t's here. Okay, so let's say that I call this, uh, go to the alphabet s of function, nope, one, two, three, yes, parentheses, there it is, of x, close those parentheses, should be an equal sign around here, it was negative 4.9 x squared and then plus 100. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter on that one, get rid of that keyboard. I'm going to change some of these settings over here so I can see the axis and see the grid. Move this stuff around, maybe shrink stuff down so I can see this parabola. Okay, again, this is not the path of the ball. It's just the uh, model of the height of the ball at any given time. And we really, we technically don't want this left side of it because it starts at the top position at 100 and then falls down to the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna plot a couple of points here. I'm going to plot the point, uh, it was from one to two. So one comma s of one. And it will should plot that point for me right there. That's very nice. And then I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the second point, which is, whoops, I want parenthesis. Really? Let's see. We can just delete that one. I want parentheses. There we go. Two, comma, and then s of two. Hit enter on that one. So basically, we want the the slope between those two points. Very, very easy to calculate. All we have to do is change in y over change in x. In this case, it's a change in s over a change in t. And uh, you can do this on your calculator the exact same way that I'm about to do it. You would go to y equals, and you would type in that function, that s of t function. You didn't have to plot those points at all, we would just go back to the home screen to do the slope calculation. You don't actually need to know what s of 1 is or s of 2 because your calculator is going to get those numbers for you. We can see them on the screen though. It's 95.1 and 80.4 from each one of those points. Okay, but anyway, I can just open up some parentheses and we'll do our division problem here as s of, I'll do the two first, arrow out of that. Did I do it with that? Yes, okay. 
minus our s of 1 arrow out of that and then the division sign and then do the bottom in the same order 2 minus 1 okay so we can see bam, we have our average velocity calculated at negative 14.7 and we want to put some units on that which is, let's see, we're doing meters and we're doing seconds. So let's just write this stuff up. See if you can remember that number, negative 14.7, because we want to kind of get in the habit of doing that thing. So uh, this is an average velocity. We want to write it up as over some sort of time interval, and this is from t equals 1 to t equals 2. Let me add an extra page in here so I have some room to write. Oh, I already have one. Okay. So, I will say from t equals 1 to t equals 2 seconds, the ball had an average velocity Of, and then we had a negative 14.7, I think. And then, of course, you want to throw in your units, meters per second. Um, why is it meters per second? It's not something that you have to try to guess at. You could get it very easily because really we're doing a change in S over a change in T, right? It's slope. And the S, it says that it's measured in meters. And the T, it says that it's measured in, boo -boo, where S is measured in meters, right? And T is measured in seconds, just like that. I don't know what happened to that M. I wasn't paying attention. All right, so that's going to conclude this one on average velocity. We're going to compare that in the next, next example where we're going to do a instantaneous velocity.